This is the melodic hardcore band Giver and their sophomore album Sculpture of Violence. Um, as I say, melodic hardcore, a bleaker, darker entry into the world of melodic hardcore. Um, it adds discordant melodies and just disparaging lyrics to make the album sound like it's absolutely drenched in despair and agony and just doom, basically. There were times where I was thinking, about, Man, it should, should this be considered a black and hardcore album? And musically, it should not. It's not. And musically, it's got nothing in common with um, black metal or anything like that. But the mood it has, like the, the overarching theme that it has, it's very... It's hard to say doom and gloom without using like very stereotypical things that you use for like doom based hardcore like in the sludge wor world or if you want to use black metal in it. Um, but yeah, it's just a very cryptic, dark and kind of hardcore and that's that's kind of what I can say for it without using any more words that I know. Um, it helps as well, so you've got Excuse me. Um, the various guitar melodies and the various um, riffs that give it that very darkened edge to it. The lyrics help a lot in creating that world of like um, despair-based hardcore, which we're going to call it, apparently. Um, Imitation Dreams feels like it's targeting toxic masculinity. And this is the thing, actually. I should have said this beforehand. There's no genius entry for um, Giver. The lyrics just sort of like stand isolated, or at least I haven't found the um, genius album rundown um, for Sculpture of Violence yet. So everything's open to interpretation. This is just how I perceive these lyrics. So a little, little caveat in there. But Imitation Dreams kind of feels like it targets toxic masculinity. You've got the lyrics. Uh, Can you remember the day that time stowed away? That first time they told you to dry your fucking tears. Can you recall what age you were? What the, was the time of year? Too young to understand when someone told you to be a man. That is fucking brilliant lyric writing. It's so good. Um, and it feels like it's just pent up rage built over years and years and years and years. And then the beautiful thing about music is that you can just release it. And you can it's artistic venting that people can get on board by. Uh, Evilist initially struck me as a breakup song. I don't want to read off any lyrics purely because... With how the rest of the album is written, all the other lyrics that I've looked at, um, I feel like... And I could be completely wrong. I could be on the ball and say this is a breakup song, one of the bands had. Um, it initially struck me as a breakup song, but again, the way how... The way the rest of the album is written and the intensity that's in it and just like the aggro that's in it, I feel like it's too simple to say it's a breakup song. It's a very, very well-written song and one of the my personal better songs on the album and but yeah i just feel like it's too simple to say breakup song and again if i'm wrong i'm wrong that's again this is open to interpretation um but yeah another great um song another brilliantly written song um long for death <coughs> excuse me i'm just slowly dying not the oh i can't say that anymore can i i'm not the actual dying uh long for death this is the one where I'm completely going off not on my own for what I interpret and what I think the song is about. The fact that the song references two souls, um, they're torn between having routine, being one of many, and wanting to be like everyone, but also wanting to be like everyone else, and almost so being like kind of animalistic in their thought process. It strikes me as a song that's written as like a first person perspective, PTSD. Um, and the lyric I've got from it is a fine line inside me, parting lust and bourgeoisie, torn between a pleasured me and a modern slavery. Without getting too personal, my stepdad uh, still technically is a military man. He came out the, the forces for a while and to watch him try and readjust to civilian life, he went for jobs where it meant he could be in a uniform. He went for a job where he could be one of a many, like a soldier. Um, and he found it incredibly difficult coming back into the civilian world. And that's kind of what I'm getting here. Because you've got like being one of the many, being having that routine, but also want to be like everyone else and just be a bit freer in what they do, a bit freer as a person. 
And he, he loves the military. He loved and continues to love the military. And that's why it is that thing between a pleasured me, torn between a pleasured me and a modern slavery. Because if, like, under a cynic's eye, you can see military as being a very modern form of slavery because you are doing what you're told and you have to do what it says without, um, often without uh, a personal input. But it's what a lot of people in the military enjoy, at least the ones that I've spoken to. So that was like my take on it. And it's, no matter what it is, it's more very beautiful, um, not beautiful, that's the wrong word, very brilliantly written lyrics with just like the darkest intents behind them. And often, like you go in the world of hardcore, go in the world of emo, that's often the best kind of lyrics to have. Um, what I want to talk about, though, after all the lyrics, is Sculpture of Violence might actually have... Well, ha definitely an early contender, the song of the fucking year. Um, every age has its dragons, parentheses, like an empire. My fucking god. That song fucking rips. There's... Everything about that song is brilliant. The, like, slow, like big tom bass drumming um as i think the lead singer is called robert they're quite cryptic in all their um identities and what they have on and what they do on the album but like the big drums followed by like just backing up the um front man as like a low crawling kind of lyric happens and then a you got bits of blast beats in there a very like walking pace um, snare and drum, a uh, snare and floor tom, fuck, snare and bass drum kind of deal, and then you got the chorus, and the chorus sounds fucking huge. It's just boom like an empire, boom like ah oh, that in a live setting. When we have live settings again, it's going to fucking melt the what's left of the planet. It is insanely good, and I didn't want to run the same problem or didn't want the same problem as when I listened to the basement record a few years ago where. Um, it was on the album Beside Myself. And the song Disconnect it was like track one or track two. And I just kept listening to that over and over again. And I fell in love with the song Disconnect. So much so that whenever I tried to listen to the rest of the album, I just wanted to keep going back. And I didn't want I didn't want the rest of the album. I just wanted Disconnect. And I ended up getting a pretty shit review from me because I just couldn't get past Disconnect. Thankfully, on here, the rest of the album is very, very good still. But... Every Age Has Its Dragons is a fucking blinder of a song. It is hardcore, it is heavy metal, it is dramatic as tits. Oh, it's fucking great. I love that song so much. And this album as a whole, very, very good. Like it, like I said, it's a very dark, bleak take on melodic hardcore. But my god, is it a good one. It is the second album from Give. It's called Sculpture of Violence. I believe it's Holy Raw, which explains why it's so great, because they do everything great, because it's so fucking great. Look at me, I'm Holy Raw, I can do anything brilliantly. I don't know why I'm 